Welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. Today, why do they stick the short guy behind the tall bags? It's fine, I'm a little jelly. So are these. Hi, I'm Mark Frechette. And I'm Scott Garrett, the research and development chef here at Modernist Pantry. In today's WTF, we address one of the top questions we get, and it's one you might not think we get, which pectin? And I think key to note is there are multiple pectins. Yeah, generally people will go to the grocery store and they'll just get what's called pectin. Right. It's either apple pectin, yellow pectin, or just fruit pectin. Sure. Uh, but which one of these is actually similar to that, works in the same way? And that's going to be HM pectin. Now there's two types of HM pectin. We'll talk about that in just a second. Yeah. But the one uh, we want is HM pectin because it loves sugar and it loves acidity. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to be making something sugar-free, once again, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But yeah. HM pectin is what you want if you're making a traditional jelly or jam. Um, and then we can get into slow set and rapid set. Yeah, so uh, HM is what you're used to. So if your recipe just calls for pectin, it's probably that. That's what you're looking for. And that answers a lot of the questions. But slow set, fast set, or yeah, rapid so set? Rapid set and slow set. Uh, the name says it all. If you're going to be making uh, pectin in, in small batches, you're, you're jarring it yourself, you're um, doing it for a restaurant, you're doing yeah. it for your friends, you're going to want rapid set. Sure. It's going to set up within a few hours and it's going to make a, a jelly or jam that is traditional that to what you like. Yeah. If you're making it in a commercial, a very large, let's say hundreds of gallons, let's do slow set. That way it's not setting up while it's in the drum and then you have to scoop it out. Yeah. Because one thing about HM pectin is that it doesn't remelt. So the slow set pectin oh. is going to, you know, if you have a lot and it starts to set up on you, you're gonna have to just have jelly, uh, you know, cubes that go into a jar. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, you probably heard it real quick, right? So it doesn't set up in your drum. When we say large batches, yeah. we mean very large commercial industrial scale. That's when the slow set uh, is going to be right for you. For, so for most jam making, your jam is going to be HM mm -hmm. rapid set. Yeah. So with the HM pectin, you're going to need at least you know 60% uh, soluble solids. So a lot of that is, ends up being sugar. Yeah. But you can't really make a sugar-free jelly or jam with an HM pectin if you're going to need that much sugar. Because the pectin needs the sugar to. Yeah, it, need, it needs to latch onto it, and that allows it to gel. So we actually have a pectin. This is where the LM pectins come in. Yeah. Uh, these two pectins are set by calcium. So if you're making oh. a, a savory jelly or jam and you don't want a lot of sugar in there, or if you're making one for someone who can't have a lot of sugar, diabetes, things like yeah, that, yeah. or you just don't want to have a lot of sugar in your diet, sure. use an LM pectin and you just need a very small amount of calcium. And we actually sell oh. certain calciums that you want to put into these. Don't put calcium chloride, which is common. We sell calcium chloride. It's great for things like spherification. Yeah. But you want to use something like calcium lactate or a calcium lactate gluconate which are flavorless. Yeah. Calcium chloride has a bitter flavor. It's not gonna make a delicious jelly, yeah. but calcium lactate with LM pectin is a match made in heaven. For my fellow vegetable-based people, this is also vegan despite the lactate in the name, so you're good to go on this one. Uh, calcium lactate is a flavorless, and if you've ever had anything that was calcium fortified in the nutraceutical foods department, your bars, for example, it's probably calcium lactate. So it's very, 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 very common um, because of that ability to add calcium to something without flavor. You're not doing it for fortification, you're doing it for pectin. So yeah, that'll let you have that. But we also have two types of LM pectin. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the difference between the two, there's amidated and regular LM pectin. Um, sorry, the amidated LM and LM pectin. Just yes. Just make sure people understand that. And the amidated ha has a, a small window for acidity. It's, it's around a 3.2 to 3.6, unless you're, you know, uh, really getting out there and you're going to use a, a litmus uh, paper strip to test it or you have a pH meter. Yeah. As long as it's not too acidic, it doesn't, you know, make your cheeks pucker or anything like that. Oh, I like it's that prob test. Yeah. It's probably good to use. Uh, if it tastes like vinegar, maybe we want to buffer it with some sodium citrate. Hey! We also have a video we, of WTF oh, on. Oh, bring this one out. No, it's okay. But uh, another difference is that amidated likes very small amounts of calcium. It yeah. can go to almost, you know, 10 to 30 milligrams per gram of pectin you use. Oh. So, so it can be a, a very trace amount. And, and one fruit that actually has natural calcium, there's a bunch of them, but yeah. blackberries have natural calcium. So you can use the LM pectin uh, to make a sugar-free blackberry jam that 
doesn't need to have any added calcium because the, oh. the blackberries also already have such a small amount of calcium in them that it'll make it gel. Oh, I like that, because that's like real sugar-free too, not going with the sugar substitutes or anything yeah. like that. That's that's actually... Yeah, pure, pure blackberries. That's my second favorite recipe. We'll get to my favorite one that you're going to share in a second, which people watching will be like, wait, you just said he's plant-based. So I did mention savory before. Yes! So <clears throat> savory recipes can be kind of tricky, especially if you want to make them gel. They need, you know, trying to do it with the HM pectin. A lot of the bacon jams, which we're getting into, bacon jams have a ton of sugar in them. And yes, you can add a little bit of sugar yeah. to an LM pectin, but you don't want it to be so sweet that you don't get all, you know, the flavor, the smokiness, uh, the acidity of, of a nice bacon. Yeah. You don't want to cover it up with that sugar. Use an LM pectin. You can also use the, uh, the calcium lactate in there and make a beautiful bacon jam that's savory, spreadable. And a lot of the times people say it's bacon jam, but it's really just bacon and onions cooked down to a chutney. Right, yeah, or or you go the extreme opposite, you get like bacon marmalade because you've added <laughs> so much sugar to it. Now, I see your gears turning trying to figure out exactly how you'd make that bacon jam that Scott talked about. Well, you can come up with it on your own, let us know what you see. But if you're looking for the shortcut, head on over to blog.modernistpantry.com and look at the top where it says recipes. There you'll find all sorts of recipes to get you started uh, and everything from our perfect guacamole to fried food that stays crisp for way longer than fried food should stay crisp for. Included in that mix, you'll also find Scott's bacon jelly. Bacon jelly or bacon jam? Bacon jam. Bacon jam. Jelly is, is clear. There's nothing, you can't see any yeah. particles in it. Uh, and jam generally has chunks or something. So yeah, you'll find it there as well. So uh, head on over there. If you like recipes, sorry, I'm gonna throw a random one in there. If you like those kinds of recipes, keep scrolling to the bottom of that page at blog.modernistpantry.com. There's a subscribe thing. Just toss your email in there. You'll never miss an episode of WTF, our Ask a Chefs, and you'll be the first to know when exciting recipes like the bacon jam come up. Yes. Yeah. So also, uh, with LM pectin, you're going to, like I said, need the calcium, but LM pectin is thermoreversible, which Ooh. that sounds like a really fancy word for something that just melts. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you are to make it and it starts to set up on you, it will melt. Also, if you're making it and you need to blend it up for some reason, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you're, you're adding something to it, you, you know, oh, I forgot the salt. You can blend it up, add the salt in, heat it, put it back into a jar and it'll reset for you. So you don't have yeah. to worry about, um, oh, I forgot the salt, my recipe's ruined, I have to throw it away. Yeah. With the HM pectin, you can't go back. Yeah. It sets, it's done, that's what you get. Yeah. LM pectin, you can really kind of backtrack and, and fix your recipe if something goes wrong. And you mentioned the blender too, that also is for things like shearing, so you, one of the places you'll probably see LM pectin, uh, or have already had LM pectin not and realized it probably is um, yogurts, yogurt drinks is mm -hmm. often a thickener used there as well. It doesn't always have to be jam consistency. Yeah, it, it works with calcium, so you put it into a yogurt drink, it'll, it'll kind of give it a little, nice body to it, yeah. and it will uh, flow freely. So. Now, in addition to your jam, you actually had some, some really interesting uses for pectin that weren't jelly, which I, I think I like these. Um, can we talk about those real quick? Yeah, so uh, I adapted a recipe from uh, Wiley Dufresne, who's an amazing chef, uh, who came up with a foie gras knot. So yeah. he used pectin to make uh, this foie gras into a almost a sheet, cut it, and then it was able to tie it into a knot. Yeah. LM pectin was used for that because you don't want to be adding a ton of sugar to foie gras and ruin you know, the beautiful consistency and flavor of it with a ton of sugar. Right. So the LM pectin, you're able to, you know, to make amazing things like a foie gras nut, and then I turned it into you know, chocolate terrine or even like a, a white chocolate cremeau that you can either twist or, or yeah. not and make a really beautiful plating out of. Uh, and it's very forgiving. It has an amazing creamy texture, so it adds to uh, the fattiness of those foods. That's a definitely go make. So um, let's just uh, kind of, do you want to catch people? Oh, we've got um, we've got one more pectin we didn't talk about, I don't think yet, and that's the one. So let's just say you didn't uh, want to add. You know, if people already have calcium lactate because they, they purchased from us before, they've done purification, I would say yeah. go with an LM pectin, either amidated or regular, uh, depending on your needs. And you're but if you want one that's going to do LM pectin, but you don't need to buy a, another thing of calcium at this point, I would go NH pectin, which is amidated LM pectin that already has the calcium needed yeah. to gel. So it's, it's an all-in-one kind of product. Uh, you don't have to worry about, oh, does this, you know, is this 10 milligrams per the gram of no, it's already got it in there. You add it right in, it works perfectly. You can make savory. You can make things that are actually pretty sweet, not sweet to the point of uh, an HM pectin. Right, right, but right. You can add sugar to it and, and it'll be beautiful. And now you, 
basically use that one when I do the foie gras knots just because the ease of use, not right. having to measure two things. You're cutting down time and cost that way. All right, so do you want to hit up the decision tree real quick just to kind of catch people up on sure. all the pectins? Hit, hit me with some questions. All I'll right, um, let's see. So uh, is the thing you're making going to be sweet? You want to use... HM pectin. And if you're not doing it in a giant batch, use rapid. Also, with the slow set, you won't get... Uh, you know, strawberries that are suspended, they'll all settle to the bottom. So oh, I would definitely call. go with the rapid unless you're doing a giant batch. Now, let's say you want to make something savory or uh, flexy, but I guess that would also be savory. Now you're going for? LM pectin. Ah. Uh, amidated will need a small amount of calcium. The regular LM pectin, you know, as long as you're adding calcium to it, will gel. And then the NH pectin, if you don't want to purchase two things, you can purchase just one NH pectin and you have, you have gelling for whatever your needs are. So there you go. We've got a lot of pectins. Uh, last bit on the decision tree. Once you realize which pectin you need, you buy it at? Modernistpantry.com. Uh, modernistpantry.com. Now, the fastest way to find the pectins, there at modernistpantry.com. They are gel, so you can use the navigation, take yourself to the gelling section. You will find it there. But the fastest way to find it is use the search bar. It's up in the top middle. As soon as you get there, you can't miss it, uh, whether you're on mobile or on desktop. So just type in pectin there. You'll find all of these uh, and pick the size you want. Uh, all of our pectins are available in 50 gram, 400 gram, and the six pack of 400 grams. It's our ultimate value pack, so you just get a lot of pectin and save a fair amount of money at the same time. Cool. All right. Is there anything else that we didn't quite hit? I know. I know. We definitely wanted to talk about the the some of the differences with thermal reversibility yeah. and the LM. Um, I'll talk about one more use of that. So if ooh. you're making a, a sweet pet de fouille, generally, like yeah. we said, sweet things, HM pectin. I know we're kind of driving it home. Yeah. But people don't necessarily make savory pâte de fouille. So if you're doing a, a fruit or you can even make tomato pâte de fouille without Ooh. having to add a ton of sugar to it, you can make it with LM pectin and make a really savory, you know, that packs a punch, there's some salt to it, and it still has the same texture yeah. as pâte de fouille. I think I just watched you invent a recipe. Later. I literally did. Yeah, you're just, that's coming up later uh, in my life anyways. All right, and also there's the pH levels. Um, so they, they have pretty big ranges. The, uh, the HM is 2.8 to 3.2. Uh, and the standard LM is 2.8 to 3.5. Look at you. Yeah, it's definitely not written on a whiteboard right there behind Came the camera. Right off my stretch. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so, so you've got that. Now, some of the other ones have tighter <clears throat> ranges. So, when in doubt, litmus test or do the yes. pucker test. As yeah, well. pucker test. If it's too acidic, you'll know. Yeah, and one of our favorite buffering agents. There's lots to choose from. Sodium citrate because you can have it for situations like that when you need to take the acidity down a notch, and also have it for making the world's best nacho cheese. If you're interested in that, uh, you're watching this maybe on YouTube. So, click the YouTube link down here uh, to take you to WTF and sodium citrate is actually our first episode of this show I think right yeah yeah is that, that one and then the bacon the one yeah so look at this <laughs> so so look if you're if you're catching up uh, you, you watch that one so you learn how to use sodium citrate you watch the next one uh, which is learn how to make your own bacon then you come on back to this one then with your homemade bacon and the power of your buffering agent you gotta make yourself a bacon jam it's the ultimate it's like, like we planned this out from scratch it's totally planned out I was it the whole time. Anything else we want to say about pectin that we haven't touched on yet? I think we touched on pretty much everything. Uh, it, it's really just knowing which one you want and yeah. what your needs are. Cool. Pick them all up. Yeah. You can't go wrong if you have one of everything. That's, that's what I say now for now on. Uh, all right. If you're looking for these, you'll find them at modernistpantry.com. Do you like this kind of inspiration, recipes, or uh, just the ability to ask Scott some really cool questions? Find Ask a Chef at blog.modernistpantry.com. At blog.modernistpantry.com, you'll find great recipes like Scott's uh, bacon jam. You'll find the Ask a Chef column where we admittedly just take the most interesting questions that you guys ask us every week or the most common ones. Scott goes into really, really, really deep details on some of these, um, so they're just really fun. Uh, we've actually helped solve a too much pectin problem not too yes. long ago uh, with somebody making some salsa, uh, and uh, if you're looking for the answer for that or anything, oh, hot, the hot climate frosting. I think that's, that's always cool going to be one of my favorites. So look, catch those there as well, and while you're there, you'll see a subscribe button down at the bottom. Speaking of subscribe buttons, that one seems a little lonely. Uh, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss out on one of these episodes as they come out, and are you a culinary professional? The share button, 
that's gonna go a long way in helping us help other culinary professionals like you uh, use these ingredients, find new uses for them, uh, whether it's this one, whether it's the, the last episode we did was a really great one for the pro kitchen with our super bags, pop back and check that out. Uh, and thanks so much for sharing it on. Um, all right, I think that's all we've got for pectin. Yeah, I think we're all pectined out. I'm all pectined out. All right, thank you so much for joining us here on Modern uh, WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Mark Frechette. And I'm Scott Garrett. Have a fantastic day.